Hi, my name is Valeria Saldivar, and I'm going to be talking about Beasts of the Southern Wild, directed by Ben Zeiland. Picture a rural, poverty-stricken, backwood patch of land in Louisiana called the Bathtub. And that area is separate from the rest of the Louisiana Bayou by a giant levee. In a small shack, there lives six-year-old Hush Puppy, played by Kovanzane Wallace, and her father, Wink, played by Dwight Henry. Now, Wink is often drunk and neglectful and sometimes abusive, but you can tell that he cares for his daughter deeply. He wants her to be strong and resilient, and I think mostly he wants to know that she'll be able to take care of herself without him because he knows that his health is rapidly declining. Okay, so I've set the scene. Let's get into the good stuff. So for me, this movie was hard to break down in terms of its category and classification, but I tried, and here's what I came up with. So according to our textbook, Looking at Movies, 5th edition, I would have to say this is one of those films that is both narrative and experimental. Here's my reasoning. It's narrative because it's fiction, and narrative films are directed towards fiction, but I also felt like it fit too many of the experimental criteria to not be in that category as well. It wasn't commercial. It was personal. It exploited the possibilities of the cinema. It critiqued culture, and it was very much up to individual interpretation. So, to me, this movie drifted back and forth between both narrative and experimental. The entire film was shot on a handheld camera, which also greatly enhanced the feeling of verisimilitude, and makes me call this a semi-realist film, with its juxtaposition between, at times, realistically portraying these people's lives, while also adding a touch of magic. Throughout the film, there are a bunch of low-angle shots, and because Hush Puppy is just a six-year-old little girl, it puts the audience in her shoes. I think the best example is the scene with her mother figure at the end. We are engulfed by the entire scene because we're at her height. We see the world exactly through her eyes. So in most movies, that I've seen at least, living in poverty is most the people who live in poverty are more commonly shown as wanting to escape, wanting to live anywhere else except where they do. But in Beasts of the Southern Wild, the director strongly resists this portrayal. But it's not like he doesn't show the more bleak and raw aspects of the bathtub. He just, he lets us see it through their eyes. Wink believes it's his right to live the way he wants, and he's convinced Hush Puppy they live in the prettiest place on earth. In their small community, the others who live there are similar to Wink in their love for their home and what they've made for themselves. They're proud of it. The bathtub is a mixing pot of races who live in peace, and Hush Puppy even says to us that the people of the bathtub have more holidays than the whole rest of the world. These are the people who live for drinking and dancing and setting off fireworks. Though they live in obvious poverty, that's not how they see it. Matt Goldberg got it perfectly when he said, This movie transports us to a world wrapped in poetry, wonder, and magic. The direction from Zeitlin, the score of Dan Romer, and the acting from Kovanzani and Dwight Henry form just the most perfect production.